So thanks everyone for joining this session. Um, today my topic is about uh, enhancing open source collaborations from incentive programs to data-driven contribution metrics. Um, so first of all, a brief introduction about myself. I'm Yaya from N Group. Um, I graduated this June, this uh, this June, and then I joined N Group open source program office, uh, focusing on data specific area to help with N Group's open source technical strategy. So this um, session is about some uh, studies I've done uh, during school and also some thing that we might want to uh, explore at um, a related, uh, uh, in case, uh, with, uh, with regard to N Group open source. So uh, in the first part, I will introduce and compare different forms of incentive programs. And then uh, in the second part, I wish to read some uh, ships with um, explored in my PhD and that we might initiate at N Group, uh, which is contribution incentive, uh, incentivization based on data driven method. So at first, uh, we could dive into the background as why we need to incentive open source contribution. So the importance of open source software, there is no need to elaborate more. Um, it's the backbone of our digital infrastructure and much of what we rely on daily is built on this freely shared code developed by global communities of contributors. So despite, despite such um, pivotal role, it faces sustainability challenges. Uh, many projects depend on the voluntary efforts of a few dedicated developers, and often these uh, developers, they didn't gain um, adequate recognition or uh, compensation for their work. So this lack of uh, sustainable support can have significant consequences, as we've seen in the past. So if we look back in to the long history, the OpenSSL was uh, pre pr primarily maintained by a small group of, group of volunteers with minimal funding. And um, so when the hot bleed vulnerabilities occurs, it affects so many downstream projects and services. And also, I don't know how many of us uh, still remember the Faker.js project when the creator intentionally subtouched the library after uh, facing frustration of Mm, with the lack of community support. So it's very essential to implement effective models to support contributors, um, to support sustainable open source development, um, especially from uh, the, uh, the, the OSPO's perspective, we need to support beyond just uh, code or technology. Um, we also need to look into the overall project governance, the community engagement, and uh, some necessary resources. And um, on the other hand, yes, uh, we talked about the sustainable open source uh, development, and another hand is open source for sustainability, um, because open source software uh, is a classical um, a classic example of public good, and uh, it's also essential for the environmental sustainability. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, as known as UN SDGs, advocate for infrastructure that is inclusive and sustainable, uh, which align closely with the goal of open source communities. Um, in fact, the UN's technical uh, ESG reports have identified open source contributions as a crucial factor in fostering global corporations, um, technological uh, transparency, and, innova and innovation. Uh, so this actually aligns with N Group's um, technical value proposition that the company is uh, positioned as an innovative technology provider that strives to bring the world inclusive green and uh, sustainable services. And that's why I joined an OSPO as part of the team to align open source sustainability and sustainable open source development. And as the de demand for open source software continues to rise um, to ensure the sustainability of these projects is no longer just a technical concern, concern it's also a, a societal imperative. So um, we summarized three types of funding models. 
um, task-based internships, issue bounty, um, direct sponsor. This is just a fine-grained um, classification. It's not um, necessarily um, very um, like um, um, it's not necessarily correct, but uh, it's um, just to class a uh, category categorize them. But uh, they typically serves for two perspectives. Uh, one is for new contributors uh, to help them learn how to contribute to open source communities, to um, su successfully onboard to some certain open source community, and even to achieve long-term conversion to stay at stay with the community and to um, convert to leader as the leadership uh, in the project. And for those who already contribute. The, the, the another um, another um, perspective is for those who are already contributing to open source projects to ensure that they can receive rewards from their contributions. So, task-based internships have a more uh, philanthropic nature to aiming to continuously bring fresh talent into open source world. Um, issue bounty um, operates in a similar fashion, uh, where Maintainers, they prepare tasks always as a form of issues that uh, is suitable for the community to solve and then further uh, monetizing the open source crowdsourcing model. Um, unlike the first type, um, in this case, the purpose is to provide compensations to open source developers. And for open source developers who already make contributions, um, a more direct approach is to provide financial support for um, to developers or projects uh, through platforms or uh, channels via um, direct sponsors. In fact, uh, when I was looking for materials, I accidentally found such a website named OSS Fund. Um, it has collected various mon monetization platforms and classified them into different categories. So um, because I found this website quite late, so um, most of, but uh, still most of the programs and platforms I mentioned later uh, are also included in this platform. And I, as mentioned, I used the more uh, course grant classification method. So if you are interested, please visit the OSS fund platform for more details. Um, but in general, I classify programs like uh, GSOC, Google's Summer of Code, into one category. Um, they are project-based internships that uh, usually last for a period of time. And the target audience is usually some specific groups, such as uh, college students, um, underrepresented groups, or some regional culture uh, atypical groups, like Africa, Asia. And uh, the starting point is usually to uh, inspire and help these groups to participate in open source contributions. So Google is the first to start such a program. And uh, Google Summer of Code, um, GSOC is a global annual program that introduces university students um, to open source software development. So uh, students who uh, work on, uh, students usually work on a three month project under the guidance uh, of mentors from um, participating open source organizations. So GSOC has been running since 2020. 2005, and uh, is one of the most uh, prestigious, prestigious and well-known open source internship programs. So um, this form um, is borrowed by some communities to do their own project-based internships, such such as um, um, those mentioned on this uh, slide, uh, like um, Outreachy, Rails Goals, uh, some of Code, uh, She Code Africa, and um, the last one, um, which uh, is actually a program uh, in Asia, the Chinese, uh, is, is, the, is pronounced in Chinese as Kaiyuan Zhixia, and the English name is Open Source Promotion Plan. So it's quite similar to uh, GSOC, and uh, it's, it also supports uh, university students in contributing to open source um, project over a summer period. And the program uh, is also growing rapidly uh, and um, gain influence and reputation. And uh, um, every year, 
I think it's the fifth year this year, and uh, mo the participate pr projects are most initiated in China, but the students participate from, um, it's now not only, now not only just Chinese students, but also um, uh, participants, contributors from um, India and other Asia regions. And uh, this program is, aims to foster local open source communities. So this kind of program, um, are great at onboarding new contributors and offering structured ways to get involved. And actually, I got the chance to talk with uh, the organizer of uh, Google Summer of Code and also the open source promotion plan. And um, I actually did some follow-up case studies of some of the uh, participated projects in such programs. Um, about the re a subsequent retention of these developers um, usually students in this community. So um, the um, conclusion is attracting students to participate is always attractive for projects, especially for projects supported by um, commercial companies, because um, this means the possibility of long-term talent employment. But after such an internship ends, um, they often struggle with long-term retention as participants tend to move on after the program ends. And um, in, from another perspective, par participating in such a project, um, actually it, for the project, it means the human investments of the mentor because it usually requires substantial time investments from mentors. Uh, which sometimes can be a bottleneck for a smaller open source projects. And the second type is um, issue bounty program. Uh, here an example is the platform Agora. So the form of issue bounty usually requires a project team to prepare the problem problems that needs uh, to be solved by the community. And um, uh, they throw these problems as a need, uh, usually as a form of issue and throw them on um, GitHub to participate in platforms. Um, and then they post uh, those issues on platforms as Agora. So such platforms, they provide um, services for both projects and uh, developers. So project maintainers, uh, they set some tasks on it, usually as a form of issues, and some are good first issues, are bug fixes, are uh, new features, and they uh, expect um, uh, they expect the community to solve them. And the maintainer, they need to price these issues. And from the developer, um, they would hop on this website to self-assign some issues that they are able to solve. And after the patch is successfully merged, uh, developers can get financial rewards. And um, in such cases, the platform is both a crowdsourcing platform and also a funding settlement system. So the problem is that maintainers usually don't know how much different issues should be priced. And some projects choose a more gentle approach. They don't issue money, they issue gifts. Um, so the pictures in the right demonstrate uh, such two cases. Uh, they are open source projects actually initiated by N Group. Uh, the uh, one is secret floor, uh, flow, it fits on the uh, security perspective, and another project uh, is NTV, is a data visualization project. So. These two projects, um, the language is in Chinese, so apologies that they might only offer limited useful information. Um, but the full name of such program they initiated called Open Source Contribution Plan, OSCP. Um, the idea was also inspired by uh, the, the, the Open Source Promotion Plan I introduced before, um, but it's more faced to the community developers, not just uh, university students. and. Um, the purpose is still um, more of to involve more contributors um, and um, they publish issues and they invite community developers to solve and then they distribute some small gifts. So even if uh, just preparing gifts and does not involve monetization, there will be problems. Um, 
around 2020, I um, accidentally read an article saying that um, you never know what developers will do just for a t-shirt. So this article refers to Hacktoberfest. Um, this event is an annual ev event organized by DigitalOcean to uh, encourage contributions to open source projects and um, participants who make a certain number of pull requests during October, they receive rewards such as t-shirts or uh, stickers. And because the event is so influential, um, it creates a sense of community excitement around um, contributing and it requires uh, quite a low barriers to uh, entry for new contributors um, and the, uh, the, the events just simply uh, distribute rewards based on the number of uh, pull requests merged uh, to open source projects, usually four pull requests. So a large number of developers uh, would fl flock into some innocent projects to submit invalid PRs and uh, this cause spam and um, sometimes uh, and, and it disturbs to many projects. So there are very superficial contributions just to meet the um, participation threshold of Hacktoberfest just to gain a t-shirt. And um, th this kind of contribution, they only focus on volume rather than the quality or sustainability of contributions. So when it, um, it comes to monetization, um, the one-dimensional PR count distorts developers' actions. It can lead them to seek loopholes in the rules to maximize their own interests. So to summarize, uh, issue bounty models, they are effective for attracting new contributors, especially for them to tackling beginner-friendly issues. However, um, they often fail to create a path for um, contributors to transition from uh, solving small tasks to taking on more significant long-term responsibilities within the projects. And they also don't provide, um, again, a clear mechanism for recognizing ongoing contributions from established contributors. So the last type. Um, represented by platforms such as GitHub Sponsors and Open Collective. They build a bridge between sponsors and um, benef beneficiaries in the open source scenario. So this is Evan Yu, the creator, the author of VUE. Uh, he, he, ha he has opened um, personal sponsorship pages very early and um, he can earn a lot of money every month just by the money donated by individual developers. So this form, it provides a steady stream of funding for developers encouraging long-term involvements and this form, it builds a strong relationship between developers and the community. But this is great for developers like Evan Yu, um, because somewhat um, he is the author of VUE, and uh, VUE is a project that has so many followers, uh, so many downstream users, and um, the project is so close to the um, application layer, uh, the, web, the, the web development. So how about the underlying projects that are equally important but not paid attention to, like projects for how about projects like uh, Log4j or OpenSSL? So even if a few people or companies, they pay attention to such projects and they are willing to donate, how can they evaluate how much money they should donate to them? So the sponsor mechanism also faces similar problem. The value of projects and the value of open source contributions can be quite difficult to quantify. Um, so the support may not always reflect the actual impact of value. And there is also Matthew effect, uh, which favors high visibility projects and developers. Um, so the richer get richer, but the poor, they never get, gain attention. So um, back to the question, should developers in open source communities receive compositions for their contributions? I think the answer is yes. So the next question is, 
how should we determine how much reward developers should gain? So, the so first is how do we quantify it? From a data perspective, uh, looking at open source software development and um, collaboration platform, just take GitHub as an example. Uh, it has rich set of behavioral event data types and um, GitHub provide open APIs. So um, there are projects like uh, GH Archive and GH Torrent, uh, but I think GH Torrent is not maintained any longer. Uh, but GH Archive is a project that provides um, monitor GitHub timeline and uh, you can get uh, various of um, developer behaviors that happens every minute on GitHub. You can get that, that, that data and um, so um, so such projects they can help us with um, um, data mining and um, also from an organizational perspective uh, there are initiatives like the chaos project and this project it continuously define metrics to try to help us to quantify in the project and um, developers that are related to open source Of course, um, although GitHub's data covers um, many, uh, how to say, most of the processes of modern open source software collaborative development, it is still very incomplete. Um, so here we define open source software ecosystem activity data as any data generated in the processes of uh, software development, maintenance, operation, ecosystem governance and evolution, um, including but not limited to a Git and GitHub log event, source code, documentation, configuration files, changes, um, development processes, developers, um, behavior events, um, packaging hosting platforms, package uh, hosting platforms, social data, and um, software ecosystem networks, and so on. So, um, now let's back to the question we raised as how do we measure open source contributions and to determine how much reward developers should gain. So here we propose a graph network evaluation method named OpenRank. Uh, noting that um, here we only involved GitHub data for now, uh, we admit that for um, open source contribution, only consider the activities on GitHub is not comprehensive. So this is only an uh, explorational experiment that is pre preliminary, and um, but, but it proved to be feasible to some extent. So the idea is um, based on that developers, they open comments, review, and close issue and pull requests on GitHub. So these developers um, made up um, developer their, their activities and also it consists collaborations and connections. So OpenRank is based on such network model where uh, here nodes represent, re that represent developers and um, their contributions. Um, as issues and the pull requests. So the edge, the edges uh, represent inter interactions between nodes, such as commenting, reviewing, or approving code change. And the core principle of OpenRank is to calculate the centrality of each node in this network. Uh, a higher centrality score indicates that a developer plays a more critical role in collaboration, uh, whether through coordination, um, problem solving, or initiating team discussions and um, code contributions. So this approach ensures that um, both direct contributions like um, those submitting code and indirect contributions like coordinators or reviewers are fairly evaluated. So you can see uh, it is actually a social network based evaluation model. Uh, traditional metrics like um, pull requests uh, we discussed before in the Hacktoberfest cases and uh, lines of code um, or the number of commits, they often fail to capture the full scope of a developer's impact. So we wish to go beyond simply counting code contributions by incorporating 
incorporating the collaborative dynamics of open source um, collaborations. And also we try to align the value proposition with the Apache way. So the Apache way, um, they have um, the Apache way. They have open communication, an authority, and community over code. So, um, um, so, so, uh, in regard of uh, open communication, this stresses that the importance of transparency, transparency, and open dialogue. Um, so. Um, they are asserting that communications doesn't happen in public forums or mailing lists is equivalent to not happening at all. Um, and uh, in OpenRank's approach, contributions are evaluated based on activities publicly visible on platforms like GitHub. So only interactions that occurs in transparent, uh, documented documented environments like issues and PRs and comments are counted. So for private com communications or non-public com contributions are not considered um, in the scoring. And also an authority, um, the Apache way, um, it, um, the, in, in Apache way, so authority within a community is earned through consistent, high quality contributions, um, not through titles or external affiliations. So in OpenRank's approach, um, every new developer starts with the same basic score. And over time, their centrality in the network grows as they engage in deeper. So more meaningful, uh, they, they, have, they engage deeper and have more meaningful contributions. And um, Apache Way also stress community over code. So um, they adv advocate that a vibrant and engaged community is more important than perfect code. So in OpenRank's approach, the algorithm uh, emphasizes social relationships and collaborative behaviors over simple code metrics. So the centrality metrics of the OpenRank algorithm is similar to PageRank. Um, its assumption is that developers wish, uh, with higher contribution values tend to collaborate with developers with, with high contribution values um, or contribute more valuable issues and pull requests. So based on such algorithm, uh, we can measure um, finally measure the contributions of each developer in the project over a period of time. And uh, we can set up a leaderboard as such, um, and on which it can also demonstrate the detailed contributions of each contributor, and it can show um, the contributor's contribution comes from which issues and pull requests, because each nodes are valued differently. So the idea is to distribute rewards distribute rewards to uh, community contributions through the leaderboard and um, based on the value of each developer's open rank. So such funding model has already promoted in some uh, small number, uh, in some small community projects and also include, including the projects that is initiated um, by um, college students that is uh, from our laboratory. So for a period of time, uh, the students' stipends, the external stip stipends are received based on such calculation. So uh, the re um, we, um, first, firstly, we verify the accuracy of such program, um, the, the contribution measurement through a questionnaire. And then we also interview with community participants about their feedback um, uh, regarding having such a mechanism during the community. And the relevant research paper is published uh, on this year's ICSI conference in, happening in April earlier this year. As you might notice that um, there is a same reference for these several slides, this paper. So here are some feedback from uh, the community participants. Um, one is from the community uh, communication aspects. Uh, we 
receive the feedback that developers, they prefer, uh, after the mechanism, they prefer to engage in public communications on GitHub rather than in WeChat, which uh, developers in Chinese tend to communicate in provide channels like WeChat. Um, and also uh, the willingness to use interactions like uh, likes or other uh, like heart, those emojis uh, are significantly increased because such behaviors will, will also be counted in the network model. So um, sometimes such interaction should not just, um, not only uh, to freeze each other's work, but also it, it serves as um, low cost form of um, recognition. And also they have um, received the message. So developers with low contribution levels, they have a strong inclination to collaborate with those who have high contribution levels. And also maintainers, now they experience less psychological burden when assigning tasks to active developers because now they can have rewards. And from the project code development aspect, um, contributors, they will pay attention to bring, breaking large changes into multiple, um, as independent as possible PRs, and which it makes easier for reviewers to review the code. And also maintainers, uh, usually they have the permission to commit directly to the repository, but in this, um, in this situation, they're, they're score won't help at all, so they will av avoid committing code directly and instead to follow the standard process as to open a pull, requ pull request and, uh, waiting, uh, for and waiting for, um, uh, for, for review. And uh, some contributors, they are particularly concerned with uh, minor contributions such as typos or dependency updates, uh, which um, Previously, that such quest, such problems they exist in the community, but no one bothered to fix. So finally, I would like to briefly introduce some tools we have de developed based on uh, data metrics. Um, the left one is OS Graph, which abstracts all entities such as developers, um, projects, orgs, issue PRs, topics, etc. Etc. on GitHub into relationships, and on which we can explore open source relationships and collaborations based on graphs in different scenarios. And another one in the uh, right is a browser extension plugin. Um, the name is Harper CRX, which uh, it implements many quantitative uh, metrics of chaos, uh, such as code changes, the number of um, participants and contributors, and the trends of stars and forks. And um, it's a good assistant for insights into um, projects they choose. Uh, once you get this extension installed, uh, hover on different buttons, it shows different um, enhanced um, diagrams. So um, welcome to install and experience it. And in addition, based on the leaderboard, we expand the scenario and um, calculate the open source developers with the highest open rank values in the entire entire ecosystem. So through labeling, we um, we recognized the top 100 Chinese open source contributors with the highest, um, highest value each year, and we give them honors together with some material rewards. So this list is now updated every month, and this is our attempt to incentive open source on a larger scale. So these are roughly what I shared. Um, to summarize, I want to point out that um, various funding models have their advantages and disadvantages, um, but the core purpose remains the same. That is, um, the contributions of open source developers should not always be free written and end up in the um, common tragedy. So the core idea we wish to propose is that every contribution in open source deserves a reward. Thank you. Thanks for this. Um, really interesting to hear about your perspectives on how you motivate people to, to do more of this. And I, I think that uh, having a, an equitable model for contributions is a really important part of how we kind of feed the ecosystem. I think it's great. Um, you use the term meaningful contribution several times. Can you go into a bit more detail as to what you consider meaningful and how you measure that? 
Um, so just to repeat your question is um, what is meaningful contributions and how to value that? Yeah, specifically, what is what is the methodology for the quantification of the word meaningful? <laughs> It's hard, um, but um, for a long time, uh, through um, uh, if, if we read the papers, uh, we, when we consider um, developers' contribution in software development, we tend to use um, we uh, for um, for many cases we only consider code contributions, and uh, we count lines of code or the time we spend to um, develop. Uh, the uh, some feature and um, um, but um, open source it uh, it, it, it relates more to collaboration and sometimes it's not just the code contribution but like maintainers they spend a lot of time in reviewing code and they do some um, um, like coordinating work they need to answer issues in the community so uh, I think this code uh, th this contributions that is um, that is not so obvious. Um, they are. They should be uh, recognized. So, uh, um, so, so, so this is a model. Uh, the, the, why we propose this model, and um, I, I want to say that uh, the coordinating. There, there is no um, contributions as this is more important than this is not. But we want to incorporate more contributions that are not so, um, not not always be counted uh, in the history. And um, also, there are some community supporting work, like um, communications in Slack or supporting work in mailing list. We, we, we wish to count them, but we haven't collected those data. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. A fantastic presentation. Thank you. Um, I was going to ask. So, for example, um, you know, I contribute to GitHub, um, but I, I'm unsure of whether I want to continue contributing. And just wanted your opinion and your your perspective. Uh, how would you get me to contribute more? Like, you know, what would you advise? <laughs> um. I think there are different cases uh, when you don't want to contribute to an open source community. Also, uh, in, from another perspective, there are different reasons why you continue to contribute. Um, so um, sometimes you gain a reputation in this project and you feel belongings. That is one perspective. And um, this, this perspective is more of um, when, you, when you use your voluntary you are volunteering in this project and um, you have other things to do and you didn't get um, reward from this so it will um, you will prioritize other things um, in front of this so we wish that um, through proper in incentivization you might wish to um, continue to contribute this and uh, a more long-term um, actually a long-term proposition is uh, if we can really uh, finally and accurately count every contributor's uh, contribution in the community that can actually be the income of his daily life. That is a more um, complex but a long-term wish. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. I, I have a question. So, as you mentioned about the uh, sense of belonging, so do we have any metrics to check this kind of thing? Um, the sense of belongings, I think, is always quite difficult to quantify that. But you can use, uh, like, um, from a more micro view of some open source project, you can. Um, you can observe the number of new contributors and how they keep staying in the community. Like for some certain of time, they still continuously contributing it. And then you can distribute surveys or have interviews with them to ask for their feedbacks. And also for, uh, for those who contribute in this project and then they become inactive, this is also the time where you can ask for their feelings why they leave the community. and. 
through this to build the sense of community belonging. Thank you for the presentation. I think that uh, you touched many points that are a pain in the metrics. Um, one question would arise if you count also the time from when, since when a bug is open until the bug is closed. Because fixing a bug may take months because it's hard to reproduce and it ends up with one line of patch. Uh, sorry, to, um, to to make sure if I catch your um, question is how to consider, um, how to measure, um, uh, like if we should consider the contributor's contribution as to consider the time of a bug is open and a bug is closed. Um, yes, we haven't um, considered the, uh, to incorporate the time perspective, the time he need to spend to work on to fix a bug or issue or future. Um, but uh, that that is, I think, something that we need to consider. Uh, and um, I, it, it reminds me of an open source project named Man Hours. It, it is a project that are using, um, but, um, I can't remember correctly how it works, but it, uh, it, it's through, it's, an, it's a way to, to measure contributions through the hours um, he works in some, in some specific projects. So I think that's time, um, the time uh, it is. And um, thanks all for um, joining this session. And um, thanks for all the questions.